listening to a Sharesies podcast. Kia ora and welcome to one of our last episodes of the year here on Shared Lunch. We have a very special show for you as we get closer and closer to the end of the year. This is the time we like to look back, take stock and review the year. And to do that we've brought in the big guns. Shared Lunch is of course a collaboration between Sharesies and Business Desk. So to review the year we've lined up Brooke and Leighton Roberts, two of the three EOs of Sharesies, and Brad Olson, Principal Economist at Infometrics, to have a look back over 2022. Let's jump straight into the questions. Uh, 2022, another big year. Um, really, really the end of a series of big years. Something like watching all of the Lord of the Rings back to back, a sort of an epic trilogy of adventure in financial markets and the economy. If you had to describe <laughs> 2022 in, in one word or phrase, what would you go for? Um, and you can go one at a time. Let's. Who wants to go first? I'll start off a, a bit of a downer. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. Do you, want to, do you want to elaborate on that further or i mean look just just after after everything always goes up i mean at, at some point something comes down maybe for a bit and i think that's what we've seen uh a bit more this year i think also i mean just the the risks of change you know i i i never come up with a particularly good bingo card for the year but i didn't expect a russian invasion of ukraine i didn't expect that you know potential nuclear war was coming through uh and i didn't expect that you'd see you know people having to rush out in front of each other trying to put interest rates up like no never before i mean that mm. i i hate the word unprecedented we've banned it in our office um but a little bit this year is, has remained that way um but yeah all, all of that it has been a bit of a downer yeah there's there's only a little over a month of this year left let's hope we can avoid nuclear war for the remainder of it uh, leighton do you have a do you have a keyword or, or phrase you know I was, I was trying to think it's hard to describe a year like this in a word isn't it because there's, there's been lots going on but I, I was thinking maybe like real or reality or something and like i feel like we're sort of um you know we rode this amazing wave really didn't we since um 2008 quick blip despite um, a massive pandemic pandemic sort of then the wave carries on its merry way for another couple of years and then um now sort of feels like it's come back to roost and maybe just a few reminders everywhere um that uh the economy still has its ups and downs still has its cycles and um and the big factors are still at play things like inflation that we haven't seen you know in earnest really for decades so um yeah i think that's uh, on reflection i'd say yeah perhaps we should have all been expecting it and i um, think lots of people probably said they were for a long time um mm -hmm. the classic economist joke in there isn't there but um we, but, we picked yeah. it but we also picked all the other things yeah. wrong as well, right? <laughs> yeah exactly so so i think um yeah i think it sort of it really landed this year mm -hmm. brooke let's bring it back to you yeah i um on the spot i have like a seesaw in mind i feel like there's been some really cool things that have happened this year like black ferns winning the rugby world cup <laughs> you know that was epic um you know there's been there have been some things that we can kind of come together and celebrate um as Aotearoa but obviously at the macro level yeah it's yeah <laughs> I guess it's been sliding down right like there's been yeah higher inflation higher interest rates higher cost of living obviously wrapped up in that um and also this un growing uncertainty uh overseas we've seen you know change in uh the UK from you know the the not just the prime ministers but obviously the queen passing away this has been quite a lot of change and I think it it feels like there's been sometimes a counterbalance in terms of the news or what's been happening to kind of bring it up again, but it, it still feels like it's it's rocking away a bit. There's been a lot more sort of churn and change, right? I mean, mm. as you talked about the black ferns, I mean, I was there mm. uh, when when it happened. I remember the last five minutes, the sort of nervous feel in your gut that <laughs> you're still excited, but you're also like, oh, I just, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what comes next. I'm not sure if we can do it. Mm. I sort of feel mm. like that's how the economy's felt a little bit through the entire mm. year that just, I'm not quite sure what what is around the corner. I feel like we've sort of been uh, we've moved into that position where previously you were always a bit more certain about what was coming through. Uh, now you just you just don't know. It, it mm. just there's so many things that are hitting all at once. Like that's why I was sort of thinking when Dan said the the end of a trilogy or something like mm. that, or that, and I really struggled to even hear that because it feels like the start of something. Like everything's way more uncertain now, I think, than the most uncertain of times, which I think was March 2020. Like you know. No one knew what was going on, certainly in, in my life with regards to consciousness of the economy. Um, but 
now yeah everything i mean you know because at the same time as we say things are bad interest rates are going up but you know most people can still afford their houses and still afford their mortgages cost of living is increasing um and that is having an impact but wages are increasing as well and mm -hmm. and have done so reasonably f fast uh and then of course just the unemployment um numbers being so so low so still really high employment and, and it seems still quite high demand for employment so um yeah, I wouldn't. I sort of very much see this as a, as a starting point for a lot of things in the end of them. So it'll be interesting. Maybe we're moving into the Hobbit trilogy or something. And it does. <laughs> it does feel like there could be some. You know, the time for some great innovation to come out too. You know, like I remember Ernest Rutherford had a quote like, "We didn't have money, so we had to think." And I think, you know, there's, you know, as times get, as times change, as times get difficult, I think here in Aotearoa we've got this overwhelming culture of optimism and innovation. And so I'm intrigued to see of the years to come how do we propel out of this and um, and yeah, and then how does that set yeah. us up globally? Well, I was gonna say, I, I think, I mean, one thing that comes through is that that movie analogy is a good one, right? Like you're at the end of the movie, mm -hmm. uh, things th the, the, the heroes have resolved it. There's maybe maybe a few that are you know a bit battered and bruised after the battle, and you, you're a bit worried. And I feel like that's where everyone is at the moment. Uh, but but you know things have, have have ended well. But then you get to the sort of the post credit scene, and, and you're sort of seeing a little bit about what the next movie might provide, and you're like, oh, I'm not sure how we're going to get through that. That's, <laughs> I feel like that's the nervousness <laughs> that we've sort of got at the moment. It's like, wow, what 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 new monster is coming? coming forward that we have to battle next if, if i were going to choose a, a, a phrase i would go with a, a slightly more positive one i would say li life goes on and i've been astounded mm -hmm. over the past three years how much chaos id can handle and how much upheaval mm -hmm. and how things keep ticking along i heard this incredibly beautiful story about someone who um, was ukrainian and, and was living in ukraine preparing for their wedding um, and they left the country when, when the war broke out but at some point after you know um, Kiev had been secured, they received a message from their wedding dress maker saying, we've completed your wedding dress and it's ready for you to pick up whenever you're ready. Um, it's just this like beautiful story about even though the city was like about to be taken over a few months ago, the wedding dress maker has kept going, kept preparing for that beautiful event and, and kind of life goes on and it might do so in a different way and terrible things happen, but you can kind of work through it to some degree. Um, which I think is quite a beautiful, Human resilience beautiful thing is pretty to incredible to reflect on, eh? Like how we adapt and within the new norm and find our way. What was something that surprised you during the year? What did you not expect that did happen? You can't say the Russian invasion of Ukraine. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll crack off. I, I mean, I, I did expect that inflation would stay high. I didn't expect it to still be this bad this far through. Um, um, and I, I think, I mean, it, that, that's the big worry I've got is that, man, it's hitting it's it's hitting some households hard. Uh, the other one, though, was the Black Ferns. Did, mm. Didn't expect that. Was pretty excited when it came through. Um, I think probably the bigger one was more just how people got so engaged and threw stuff behind the, the, the team, you know. And I think that the, the vibe in the country, yep, we've got challenges. Yes, there's nervousness and worries. But I feel like we're sort of, we, we start with a good amount of momentum, be it in the rugby, you know, be it in, in, in life and in the economy. So, I, I mean, that gives me some confidence for the future. Nice. I think more recently I've been thinking a lot about the US and their part mm. to play in the global economy. Mm. And um, uh, and to be honest, I came out of the recent elections with some optimism towards that, regardless of which party won or anything. Certainly, perhaps a bit of a, a, a return to more, well, in my view, any, anyway, rational politics, um, and uh, including who was flowing through there. So I've sort of been nervous about where that was going to head for some time. Clearly, the US is um, an important leader um, for a country like New Zealand and, and you know, the macro world and, or the Western world broadly. So um, I've found that sort of like a super intriguing thing to, to watch. And, you know, I was surprised at how that played out. So... Um, uh, yeah, and, and in a good way. So in, in itself, that's a bit surprising after, you know, it's been a super interesting place to watch, isn't it, for the last two or three years? Definitely. Brooke, Brooke do you have a surprise? Yeah, I, I was thinking about um, the US, Australia and Aotearoa and how things just seem a little bit more in some ways insulated here in um, Aotearoa and Australia compared to what I'm hearing and seeing in the US in terms, in particular in the tech sector. And I think that's um and that's something that's kind of interesting in my mind at the moment um and then i think yeah i do agree with uh brad on the black ferns i think when i was fortunate enough to go to the game too and i felt like i just witnessed women's sport in general being completely leveled up um for, in the future and i just hope that we kind of stick to that and see you know more and more support going behind um 
women's sport essentially because that was just really phenomenal to be part of. Can, can I have a second bite of the cherry only because as we've been thinking, actually yeah. the biggest surprise I had in uh, this year was just how absolutely cooked one prime minister could make the UK economy almost overnight. I mean, that really t- that turned that the U- United Kingdom into an absolute basket case. Um, I mean, the fact that you had pension funds just about on meltdown, the fact that you know you saw uh, bond rates spikes. I mean, that that one there, I think, was just such short term chaos. Uh, and to see it utterly reversed, and and you know to to see a, a the, the queen pass and a new prime minister installed. I mean, that that was hectic. I I have not seen Definitely. that in a while. Do you think we also probably didn't expect the property market to come off as much as it has? Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting point. I feel like um, after it going up so much, Mm. I feel like I was personally pretty comfortable with it coming back, Mm. but also not quite thinking uh, about the pace that it has. Mm. And especially, I mean, it depends, I think, a lot on where you are. Like Mm. Wellington prices are down 20%. Mm. That's that's a huge amount. Mm. I think that the difficulty is the balance there of the housing market coming back, but those who do have loans... Man, they're facing a tough, tough mm. charge. I've got a friend in Wellington. They need to find twenty four thousand dollars more next year for mm. their mortgage. And if they sold up, they'd be making two hundred thousand dollars less. Like that's mm. a that's a difficult equation. Mm. Um, but I think it is very much that that those who have more recently got into the market they are in a more compromised position than people have been holding for 10, 20 years. But again, it's like it's that short term approach, right? Like how long do you plan to hold this for? And you know, hopefully over time. Well, and, and that's the thing, you know, like um, this friend's not an investor. They're, they're buying it because they need a roof over the head. Mm. Therefore, they don't yeah. need to sell. Um, yeah, yeah, they need to pay the mortgage and 24 k is a big ask, but yeah. they'll, they'll be able to do it, I'm sure. Uh, but, you know, I, I think mm. it also hopefully brings a little bit more rationality back to the market. It says to people, don't just expect that everything will always be strawberries and cream, no matter what, forever. Mm. Um, there is a risk inherent, and yes, we do expect it to, to change over time and to recover, uh, but to just expect that something goes up and up and up and never has a chance of falling, I think hopefully we've actually brought a bit more reality back to people. Oh, no, I was just thinking, I feel like lots we're talking about. For me, I sort of also had like an, a revelation while, while Brooke and Brad were talking just then, but it's like almost the biggest surprise is how things just keep on changing. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, you touched on the UK and, you know, if I was to make it, like, let's be honest, it hasn't exactly been, despite all of what's happened in the last three or four months, it hasn't, wasn't exactly smooth sailing in the oh, it's pretty three years before, later, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you, b- b- mm-hmm. between Brexit and, um, you know, a lot of what um, Boris Johnson got up to and stuff, there's lots of amazing stories. And to say that it was going to get even more hectic, like, I just don't think I would have believed that coming in. But um, what's yeah. next, right? Like, you know, <laughs> so, so, leave, leave well, that's the next question. Right? I don't even know what comes through before the end of this year. I mean, <laughs> the, the bingo card's still got some spare spaces on it. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's one of the questions, you know, as we sort of get to the end of the year, what are the big questions you still have in your mind what are you wondering about what are you thinking about what are you watching for yeah look i mean i feel like we've touched on a few reasonably grim subjects with with how things have Mm. been heading but like you know it's always the turn right because after every winter comes a summer and and we've just experienced uh, not wanting to get two games thrown on it, uh, a winter after a very long summer but like now it's looking for what those opportunities are and and um humans you know we, we're optimists as a population generally you know we, we are that way and we're always looking for growth and we'll find a way out of it so um i'm really interested to see what innovation comes with that you know with great problems come great opportunity and i'm sure we'll look reflect on this as a great period of change and um i, I read something yesterday just an email that came through with the number of engineers who have been laid off in the us recently in the companies and they're expecting uh, this happens to coincide with a lot of money in venture capital right now and venture capital sort of what's used for funding early stage companies often so um it's interesting to see what w- will come of that you know how many of these people will be looking to solve problems that they've had somewhere how, how's this gonna you know are we, are we about to see an, a further uh, acceleration of innovation and tech and stuff and like i'm pretty excited about that yeah i, th- I- I, I think for me that the question that uh, on my mind is what is the what's the barbecue conversation this year looking yeah. like? What what are people concerned about? Because I think that th- those sort of expectations and intentions do shape a lot of how people are, are going to react, you know, as we go forward. And I mean, a big one for me is around you know just how people are looking to spend their money. 
interest mm. rates are going up by by now i would have expected people to go man I'm, I'm i'm hurting i need to you know cut back on spending a bit more we're not seeing it um and i sort of go you know what what's driving that what's people's motivation as they head into next year um what are they thinking about with the likes of, of the property market or the stock market you know are they still keen uh, to get out and about what's that focus sort of changing um you know maybe it wasn't the tech sector is it now the energy sector what's what sort of um on top of the people's minds that's that's a big question for me as we sort of go through the the last month of the year is uh, you know yes people will be reflecting but i think people will also be thinking about okay what do i need in my life what's changed in my scenario that i need to consider a lot more yeah, those New Year's reflections start to come in or the end of year reflections to kick off the New Year's goals, eh? And I think it's been interesting to see how those have evolved over the last couple of years too. Like pre, pre-pandemic, pre most people's New Year's resolutions were to um, lose weight, eat better, exercise more kind of thing. Did I send you my list? <laughs> <laughs> but now that, you know, we've seen this change too. I want to learn new skills. I want to connect with my family more. I want to, um, you know, like it's more about like that kind of, that, that, nourishment of ourselves and and in our community and so i'm intrigued as we head into the end of the year um you know there uh, people will start doing more christmas shopping but what will that look like this year will there be uh, as we've you know this juncture of really needing to really be conscious consumers now and make sure that we're buying things that are either for quality and long term that can be fixed or or reducing the kind of the plastic and you know the environmental and sustainable options for christmas i'm intrigued as, as these pressures come will there be more um, options in that space or, or more pressure in that space seeing a lot more Christmases too where people get together and they're um, they're not buying for everybody they're doing a bit more of the what if we just buy one and I think that's going to be really interesting going into the retail spending this summer and what impact we see because I know you're saying we're still seeing spending higher but I'm I'm hearing a lot more conversations pre the barbecues not really barbecue weather yet but a lot more conversations about well why are we spending this way it's actually about being having time together and that's the most valuable thing people can have this year is that time together given how long we've been pulled apart for um you know and and so a lot of people just reconnecting and that being the present i guess so i'm intrigued on on what um spending does and then how that then flows on into our economy and then obviously we've got the great shipping debacles going on which seem to kind of be getting a bit better at the same time, might be getting worse. So, yeah, I think that's going to be interesting for economists to be watching. Anywho, oh, we. I mean, look, I, I just I feel like I need to go for a ride on a cargo ship. That that uh, you know, <laughs> get you some real time information next time I come on the pod. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do 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 do